Oh wow, it started up right away this time. Usually the dumb uh, Windows Movie Maker is so slow it takes like a long time before it even starts to start recording after I push the start capture button. But anyway, hello this is Cassette Master here and I have made something very special. For a long time I have been wanting an ESR meter. Been needing an ESR meter. An ESR meter is uh, a major what's called equivalent series resistance. And basically what it is is an AC ohm meter. And um, what it's very useful for, and what I built it for, is for testing out capacitors to see whether or not, now this is electrolytic capacitors, to see whether or not they're leaky. Although I do have a cap meter, there are some disadvantages with a cap meter. You can't always tell if a capacitor is leaky with the cap meter, although a lot of times you, it will, if it reads no reading at all or very off reading, then it's bad. But still, um, it may not be the best for testing capacitor leakage, and also the cap, the cap meter, the capacitor has to be taken out of the circuit. But whenever you want to test a capacitor in circuit, you want an ESR meter. So I went to an internet site. I'll need to pull this site up. Here's the um, website that I went to. And um, I found it from, by searching ESR meter circuit on Google or it might have been Bing. Um, and it's got a schematic and everything. It's very nice. So I printed out the schematic and here it is. Oh gosh. And um, I penciled over where I finished wiring as I was doing it. I first breadboarded it and then I um, made some modifications to the circuit because when I first built it, thing wasn't working right. It, um, I didn't have exactly the 74HC14 um, in, so I used a 40014 Schmidt trigger. And um, mine um, didn't work right with the original values, so I switched this to a 10K resistor, switched this to 680 picofarad capacitor. I bumped the power up to 9 volts instead of 5 volts. I shorted out this 680 ohm resistor, and I used a 50K pot and because uh, I didn't have a 25K one lying around, and I, sh I took out that 10K resistor. And um, it works very nicely. So, without further ado, let's show it thing operate. I didn't have a 50 microamp meter movement lying around. I have some meter movements, but they're not 50 microamp. I have this meter here, which has a 50 microamp setting, so it was perfect. Um, it's a really nice meter I got from my best friend Evan, my friend from the second grade. He gave me this meter. Um, I did a little bit of repair on it because the um, needle wouldn't go up all the way. So I had to do some very careful adjusting inside the meter. Very careful adjusting. And through enough adjusting and using it, it managed to free up. And it's very nice. So um, it's got a lot of settings on it. And um, on one of the settings it has is point two on the voltage setting is a 0.25 volt range or 50 microamp so that was perfect so I built the SR meter circuitry itself into this nice little case turn the thing on green LED lights up push this button to zero the meter hold this button down and I can set it to zero of course this thing never stays at one setting at all even at drifts even staying on for some weird reason it's quite annoying but anyway I set it to zero and so this is where you would hook up your meter and right here is where you put your capacitor or you can hook up external leads and do your capacitors that way so here I have a 100 microfarad 50 volt capacitor does not matter the polarity which is one nice thing I like about it and as you see here it goes high on there very low ohms, very very low ohms, um, less than one ohm, I think so. You know, 
Now you, I can't use the actual readings on the meter for this. I have to use the position of the needle itself. But it shows a good capacitor. And um, let's get another capacitor here. Let's get this 470 microfarad capacitor. And it shows a good capacitor. Of course, when we when we zero the meter, it goes hardly any further. Like I said, this thing drifts even while it's on. I have to reset the zero sometimes, but once you get it set to zero, release the button, and it barely goes away, showing a very good capacitor. And the lower microfarad capacitors are going to give um, lower readings. Here's a brand new one microfarad capacitor, 50 volts. Let's try it out. It doesn't go as far as the higher value capacitor does, but it still goes well more than halfway. So you still see that it's a very low resistance and you know that it's still a good capacitor. Now, out of the national reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, which I forgot the model number, here's a capacitor which was likely causing the BIOS oscillator not to work when I got it. I had replaced all the electrolytics in the um, amplifier on that machine and this is one of them. This 4 microfarad 15 volt capacitor, kind of fat looking, yellow colored. Or the other ones were this light blue color, so this one stands out. And um, I'll have to hook up some uh, leads to the tester real quick. Of course, um, when you put leads on, their resistance will add to it. So whenever you have the leads on, you want to zero it by actually touching the leads together as opposed to just pushing the button. Because pushing the button will make it slightly different. Okay, I got the camera at the meter right here. Here's the capacitor that came out of the recorder that was um, leaky. And I'll show you the difference. Remember, when I tested good capacitors, the meter swinged almost full scale. But when I test this bad capacitor, notice the difference. It barely goes. See that? It barely goes. So you know whenever it barely goes, you know this capacitor is bad. So this capacitor was tested to be bad. Also, here's another old capacitor that came out of a 1960s tape recorder. The Mayfair 1602 to be exact. It's a 10 microfarad. And if we test it here for ESR, you see it's not too bad. Let's compare it to a fresh 10 microfarad capacitor and see. Oh gosh, I just dropped a capacitor. Let's compare it to this brand new 10 microfarad. We have a brand new 10 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. And you can see it goes considerably further than this old one from that recorder which doesn't go quite as far. Might still be alright for some uses, but ultimately is re replacing as a good option. Um, here's another capacitor that came out of the National Recorder I mentioned earlier. It's a 5 microfarad, 15 volt. And as you can see, it ain't too great. But, even though it might test ain't too great on the ESR meter. When you test it on the cap meter, you wouldn't have ever suspected it had been leaky when you see that it's 9.6 microfarads or 9.59. The seven segment display on there sometimes doesn't light up fully. But as you, so you put on the cap meter and you think, oh this capacitor is just fine, but you put on the ESR meter and you find it out that it is a little bit leaky. So that's one um, thing where ESR meters come in handy because you can't always tell by the cap meter when a capacitor is bad. Out of curiosity, let's test this one yellow capacitor. This one that was known definitely was leaky. And when testing it on here, it says 3.17 micro or 3.18. It's slowly climbing up. 3.2 is it stopping at or 3.23 now. Anyway, but you see it's about 3 microfarads and you think, oh, this one's probably still good. But no.
it's leaky. Of course, you can see it was kind of climbing up and not consistent on the value, which is probably because it was taking longer to charge the thing up because it had the uh, the resistance in there. So um, you can see that the ESR is very good for testing out capacitors. Um, so this machine is going to come in very handy for them. Quick and easy testing out capacitors whenever it's not whenever you either isn't convenient or you can't do the capacitor test where you put a known good capacitor across a possible bad one. That works sometimes but it doesn't always work. Sometimes you can't get to it easily, sometimes it's not a audio circuit or sometimes turning on the audio while you're doing it just isn't practical, isn't easy so ESR meter is ultimately what you want. So Anyone with some soldering experience can build themselves an ESR meter if they don't want to try to find one on the internet and pay high prices for them. Um, just go to that internet site that I showed and build one yourself. And if you have the 40014 chip at least, I suggest trying the different components I showed because I could not get it to work right off the originals that were on the schematic. Um, and it's a very nice unit very nice I hope you enjoy the video of my little equivalent series resistor meter sorry for my bad camera handling